Hello, I'm Rob Satloff, the director of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, with some first impressions about the election results in Israel. Now, these, of course, are based only on the exit polls that were just released, but they have been startling results. The exit polls show that Bibi Netanyahu's Likud party and Isaac Herzog's Zionist camp party are neck and neck, down to the wire, toss up, use whatever metaphor you like. They are even, approximately 27 Knesset seats each. This reflects some important movement in just the last 48 hours, and in a certain respect, reflects some success for Netanyahu. Up until just a couple of days ago, uh, Labour was winning, was winning by a margin of three or four seats, and then both parties, in a sense, panicked. Netanyahu panicked when he declared that under his leadership there would be no Palestinian state, contravening a commitment he made just a few years ago. He was trying to win back voters to Likud that he had lost to a further right-wing party belonging to Naftali Bennett. On the left, to the center-left, uh, there was a big change as well. When Sippy Livni, the partner of Isaac Herzog, uh, issued a hasty declaration just yesterday that she would no longer claim her rightful seat in a rotation of prime ministry. Evidently, internal party polling had showed that she was more of a drag on the ticket than an advantage to the ticket. Both parties panicking in the last two days Bibi Netanyahu's response to it seems to have won him back many of the lost votes that he had lost throughout the election campaign. But that's only part of the story in this campaign. Story number two is the fight for the center. In the last election, the big news was Yesh Atid, a party that didn't exist, came out of nowhere to win 19 seats, led by Yair Lapid. In this election, the center again had parties that came out of nowhere, but the center bloc did not expand very much. This time, Lapid's party and the new party, Kulanu of Moshe Kahlon, former Likud minister, uh, split the center vote. Together, they only add up to a little bit more than Lapid did in the last election. Basically, 19 seats last time, 20, 21 seats this time. Those votes came from Netanyahu's Likud, the excess ones. The fight for the center, the center didn't grow that much. The third big story in this election is the effect of the new rules. The irony that uh, Avigdor Lieberman, the hard right um, minister, foreign minister, um, insisted on a change of election rules that raised the threshold from 2% to 3.25%, meaning that a party that didn't win at least four seats to the Knesset gets zero seats. That had several unintended results. First, one key party that was on the right wing of the spectrum appears not to have made it at all. This is the Yachad party of Eli Yishai. Doesn't appear to have crossed the threshold. That's a blow to Netanyahu, who would count on Yeli Yishai to be in a coalition. But the most important result of the, uh, the threshold change was to compel the Arab parties to unite. In Israel's democracy, even the Arabs are always divided. But because they all feared that they wouldn't meet the threshold, they swallowed their differences, Islamists and communists, and came together in a single unified list to maximize the Arab vote. The result, the United Arab List is poised to receive 12, maybe 13, even 14 seats in the new Knesset. That makes them a major force in Israeli politics. The long-term implications are huge, especially in terms of integrating Arab Israelis into the broader Israeli political system. In terms of this election, they could have an important voice as well when they recommend their preferred candidate for prime minister. So when you put it all together, how does it look? 
What is the likely outcome with a dead heat between Netanyahu and Herzog? Well, a dead heat makes it more likely that Netanyahu can form a coalition. He has more natural partners among the other parties, but not by much. It is a very close race still. Indeed, the election only began. Phase one was today. Phase two of the election, the phase that really counts, is when the leaders of all the parties come knocking at the door of the president of Israel, Reuven Rivlin. He is the only person who has the power to appoint someone to form the next coalition government. He does that based on the recommendations of the leaders of, of the various parties. Now, Rivlin is known to prefer not an option with a small, narrow government, either of the right, even though he is a man of the right, or of the left, but rather he is known to prefer a national unity government. And indeed, if you put together the votes of the two major parties, you are almost at that majority threshold just with the two of them. It's easy enough to get another party, and once you cross that 61 threshold, the parties will all join in. Not all, but many of them. The Arab party will be out of the government no matter what. But indeed, in a national unity government, we will have the new situation of the Arab list being the official opposition. Also an entirely new phase for Israel's democracy. Will they decide to do this? Will Labour and Likud decide, contrary to the promises they made to their voters during the campaign, will they decide to come together in national unity? Or will each of them decide to do their best to form a narrow left or right-wing government? That's what we will see in the coming days. Of course, between now and then, there are still more votes to be counted. The soldiers, for example, being counted by hand. The election results can change. A vote here, a mandate there. And in the Israeli electoral system, one or two votes here or there could make all the difference between forming the government and being in the opposition. That will all be clear in the next few hours, in the next couple of days, and then we'll be back to explain it again. Thank you.